topic is neural control and coordination in the sense organs. In the previous video, I have given eye structure. Right now, I am going to take ear. The human ear. The human ear. See here, we have one pair of ears which are present in our head region in the lateral side one one here has a ear has a stato acoustic receptors stato acoustic receptors are present what are the receptors aco stato acoustic receptors These receptors are, this are meant for hearing and equilibrium. The function of ear, hearing, not only hearing and equilibrium also. But ear has a Stato-acoustic receptors, which means these receptors are helpful for the not only hearing and equilibrium also. Equilibrium also. The ear, the whole ear, it is somewhat external and remaining is the which are connected with the temporal region of the skull also. Now here see that uh, maintenance of the equilibrium and hearing, how it is happens in the ear, what are the parts are present in the ear. Now we are going to learn. In this first, ear consists of the first one external ear. External ear, the external part, and second one middle ear. Middle ear. Third one is which is the internal one is the internal ear. Internal ear. These are the three parts which are present in the complete ear. Now, external ear, which is consists of the three parts. External ear consists of the three parts. First one is ear pinna. Ear pinna. This is also called as auditory and second one is the external auditory meters. External auditory meters and last ends with the this external auditory meters or the external auditory canal ends with the tympanic membrane which is known as the eardrum. Eardrum, also called as tympanic membrane. These three are parts in external ear, which is the non-elastic cartilaginous tissue. Funnel shaped one is known as the ear pinna, also called as auricle, and external artery meters, a tunnel structure, also called as the external auditory canal and here it ends with the that membrane is there very fine and thin membrane we call it as a eardrum this is also known as tympanic membrane tympanic membrane here this is called as a auricle ear auricle ear penna which is little funnel shape and immobile and it is made of the cartilaginous tissue. When we'll go for the middle ear, middle ear is present between the external ear and internal ear. But here have a that when this tunnel is ends or the canal is ends with the ear drum, to that this middle ear will be stopped. Here only have a 
it's uh, between these two halide two fenestras are there which are the round window and oval window now here along with that here that is the space air filled cavity which is the middle area is the air filled cavity which consists of the three ear ossicles ear ossicles ear ossicles are present and moreover eustachian tube eustachian tube also present over here only that tube is the air filled tube which connects the middle ear to the pharynx which can air filled tube you know which can maintain the equilibrium pressure between the two ears between the two ears there's a tube which connects the middle ear to the pharynx that connection is called as structural tube and ear ossicles will go one by one later and later internal ear is there it starts with the wall window and around it, you know there's the bow the membranous and bony labyrinth like structures here have a the first part of internal ear is the cochlea we'll discuss later this one cochlea is the first one next one vestibule or the vestibular apparatus next one semicircular canals semi circular canals semi circular canals these are the main parts which are involved in the complete ear ear consists of the external ear and middle ear and internal ear then here external ear consists of the ear pinna which is outside the funnel shaped one that external ear called a, it has a ear pinna also called as auricle and moreover the external auditory canal are the meters the tube like structure which is a funnel like structure which connects the outer environment to the ear drum the ear drum is the very tiny or the fine membrane that will be there here end of the external auditory meters and moreover the middle ear which starts from the ending of ear drum right it has a three ear ossicles which named as the malleus incus stapes and distal tube and these starts with the oval and round window fenestra ovalis and fenestra rotundus which cut here as the internal ear cochlea vestibule and semicircular canals now we we'll discuss one by one ear pinna first one is the ear pinna first i'm going to discuss about the external ear in the external ear what we discussed here ear pinna is there which is a slight funnel like structure ear pinna also called as a auricle which has a funnel like structure right and it made up of the cartilage cartilage tissue and immobile elastic in nature non elastic in nature this useful to the shape funnel shaped structure which is useful for the to receive the sound waves properly and it will be sent to the next part which is known as the external auditory meters the ear pen pinna next one external auditory meters are the canal which is a tunnel like structure which connects the ear pinna it ends with the the membrane tympanic membrane now here see this tunnel it can allows the sound waves from outer environment to the middle ear with the small chain of bones also there these external auditory meters the skin consists of the specialized sebaceous glands 
we called as the serous glands sebaceous glands the specialized structures called as the serous glands serous glands which secretes the cerumen which is a ear wax ear wax that's why called as a wax glands cerumen is the wax that wax is secreted from the modified or the specialized sebaceous glands known as a serumenous glands and moreover the skin is covered by the hair small hair sets also there now this wax and hair structures which can prevent the entry of dust particles and moreover when more decibel sound which will be absorbed on our eardrum it can prevent somehow the ear wax can prevent the direct more frequency sound that should not be fall under directly on the eardrum it will be useful to prevent by the ear wax and along with the ear wax and hair they can prevent the entry of dust particles what it next one that's about the external auditory meters it ends with the eardrum it's look like a tunnel structure it's ends with the eardrum eardrum also known as a tympanic membrane tympanum tympanum or the tympanic membrane which when sound receiving when it is fall on the sound waves on particular eardrum it will be vibrate that's the eardrum also known as the tympanic membrane or so tympanum now this will be directly contact with the middle ear the middle ear consists of three ear ossicles how many ear three ear ossicles that's the middle ear over sorry second middle ear middle ear external ear completed middle ear middle ear it starts with the three ear ossicles how many ear three ear ossicles three ear ossicles which the names of that m i s miss miss means how to abbreviate malleus malleus i for incus and s for stapes malleus incus stapes these three are the small bones which are present in the middle ear which are present in the middle ear now here the shapes of bones are so very important here for that have a code h a s m i s is the order m i s here which of the following bone is contact with the eardrum should write the malleus okay the shape of the malleus again has a code h a s means hammer this is the hammer shape angle shape and stirrup of shape s for stirrup this is the hammer shape this is the anvil this is the stirrup shape what it h a s has hammer anvil stirrup so the stirrup is shape is the stirrup the shape of the incus is the anvil shape of the malleus is the hammer so here which is the bone which touches with the or directly contact with the eardrum means you should write the malleus and among these three which is the smallest bone stapes is the smallest bone than the all bones in our body and which is the smallest muscle which present over the stapes that is called as stapedus stapedus is the smallest muscle which present on over the stapes because of the stapes is the smallest bone that should have a definitely muscle is there that muscle should be as the smallest then we call as a stapedus is the smallest muscle stapes is the smallest bone 
which is present in the middle ear under comes the ear ossicles these three bones which are have a different shapes you know hammer and anvil and stirrup here h a s h m i s means this is the core for it now these three bones which arrange one to another as a chain like fashion so one hand which we touch with the other one and it is a join with the other head of the other bone anyhow if it is a what you call a, if it is eared no to that the head of the malleus the head of the malleus contact with the eardra and more over the this is the malleus you know mis next one is the incus incus is a like this the bone is there which contact with the second third one is the which is known as the status m i s this is a chain of bones which three are attached like this and which bone of middle ear it opens into the round window here round window will be there here that bone is the status malleus incus status status is contact with the round window and here malleus is contact with the ear drum contact with the ear drum that's it so here when mechanism of hearing when found vibrations is fall on the ear drum the ear drum will be vibrate and send the same sound vibrations of the sound waves will be passed from the malleus to incus incus to the status establishes the round window these are the fluid field cavity we will discuss in the internal ear internal ear now here in the middle ear only air filled tube air filled tube is there we call it as the pistacian tube this tube connects the middle ear to middle ear to pharynx middle ear to pharynx so it is a air filled tube you know from the both and two ears one pair of pistacian tubes are connects the middle ear to pharynx these because of the air filled nature it can equalize the pressure in the both ears the main function of the pistacian tube is the equalizing the pressure equalizing the pressure in the both ears pressure that's the equalizing the pressure and both ears because of is a filled with the fluid which is a air filled air filled tube it will be equalizing the pressure in the both ears the tube comes to the way to where you know middle ear to pharynx middle ear to pharynx so here are the concerns of the three bones mis malleus incus staples hias shapes hammer anvil stirrup this is the stirrup shape and the shape and a hammer shape these are the shape of these uh, three ear ossicles how they are you know that uh, chain chain like fashion which is attached to the ear drum means should ride the malleus which is towards the round window should ride the status what it next one is a middle ear after it has a round and oval windows are there two windows are there which also fluid filled cavity which are the fenestra oblongus and fenestra ovalis in these internal ear only we can discuss the cochlear structure and vestibule and more over the semicircular canals we will discuss in this external after the middle then after the last one is the internal ear
after middle ear, you have to move into the internal ear. See here, internal ear. Before going to that, we look into the diagram. This is the external ear and the middle ear, which is known as the ear, will come as the middle ear from auricle and auditory meters, and it will be there here. This is eardrum up to here external ear. Actually, eardrum is not a particular part of external ear, but it's present. It's uh, external ear is terminate with the small membrane we known as the eardrum. Then here, esters and tube here, there here. This is the esters and tube. Then, round window, we call as a fenestra rotundus. Fenestra rotundus. Then after here, was spring shaped cochlea, which is a pointing internal here and here three bones which are attached to the from eardrum which are the arranged as chain fashion chain like fashion and which is known as the Status. It has a vowel window, it's present here. Vowel window, fenestra vowalis, dirt, maris, incus status. Status is attached to the or terminate in the particular area. This is known as a vowel window. This is known as a vowel window. And here, status, incus, maris are there, you know. These M I S M I S S is a status which is which is smallest bone right smallest bone now here is you can find the anteriorly and posteriorly and horizontally three semicircular bony structures are there we call as a semicircular canals we call as semicircular canals. Here is a two, and here will be the one. These are the semicircular canals. Now, come to the points here the labeling, then we go for the internal ear. This is the ear pinna. Ear pinna. This Tunnel shaped part which is known as the external auditory external auditory meters right and this is eardrum or tympanic membrane tympanic membrane eardrum right this is a tube, air filled tube, we know as a istasin tube. Istasin tube, which present here, it connects the middle ear to the pharynx. It should be used for the equalizing the pressure in the both sides of the ear. This is a fenestra rotundus. Fenestra. Rotundus, we call as a round window. We call as round window fenestra rotundus. And moreover, this is known as the oval window. We call as fenestra ovalis. Fenestra ovalis. And here itself only vestibulous apparatus will be there here. And this spring like structure is called as a cochlea. Spring like structure called as a cochlea. What it? 
and these are the semicircular canals semicircular canals and these three are the which known as 1 2 3 three are the ear ossicles eo ossicles ear ossicles what it now this is the complete structure and it's innervated with the auditory nerve which known as the eighth cranial nerve called as the vestibular cochlear nerve here what is the reason behind that two terms are there vestibular cochlear now we call as eighth pair of cranial nerve See here, vestibular cochlear means in our inner ear, two parts are there. We know as the vestibular part and cochlear part. These two are so present in the internal ear only. So that nerve which is the branch of cochlea and vestibular, these two should be innervated from the internal ear of vestibular part and cochlear part as a eighth cranial nerve. That's why. We are calling as a vestibular cochlear nerve, which known as the, that number is the eighth cranial now. Eighth cranial now. Eighth cranial now is known as the what you call eighth cranial vestibular cochlear now. Right? Now we will go for the internal ear structure. Internal ear structure. See here, before going to that, internal ear. Internal ear consists of fluid filled cavity which is uh, have a two parts we call as the first part is called as the complete part is called as the labyrinth labyrinth the labyrinth have a two portions which are known as the bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth bony labyrinth and Membranous labyrinth. First one is the bony labyrinth. Bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth. Right? These are the two pores present in the internal ear. Now here bony portion of the bony labyrinth consists of the three parts which are known as first one is cochlea cochlea and second one is vestibule third one is semicircular canals what is there here cochlea is the one part of bony labyrinth and vestibular part here there vestibular apparatus and semicircular canals we call as semicircular canals under comes the bony labyrinth semi how many there you know these three one is anterior to this oval window posterior to the oval window and horizontal to these bones we call it as a semicircular canals right now go for the cochlea structure of cochlea which we shall already you know what's the part in the part of internal ear it's the one portion of the bony labyrinth the cochlea see here cochlea we are talking about the cochlea this cochlea is watch spring shaped bone which has a three tubes in a one tube three tubes in one tube like that Cochlea, rather we go for this one more. Then, now I am going to discuss that cochlea structure. That internal ear part only, na? That's cochlea. Cochlea is a spring-like structure. Okay, one is a tube within the three tube. It means if it is a one tube. 
it has a one more tube within that tube and one more tube within that tube right that's the reason three tubes in one tube this is the watt spring structure watt spring structure spring like structure spring like structure right these three tubes are there you know these three tubes how they arrange what are the names of tubes here actually itself it's having it have a three tubes you know first one scala vestibule and scala media and scala tympani got it these are the three tubes names one is a scala vestibule scala media and scala tympani four is a diagrammatic pot it's look like this is a scala vestibule and this is the scala media here and tympani it has a look like this right now you see that the scala vestibule and the scala media and scala tympani these three tubes are separated by the two membranes the membrane names are this is separated by the between the vestibule between the scala vestibule and scala media have a fine membrane is there that's known as a resinous membrane what are the membrane resinous resinous membrane what is and between the scala media and the scala tympani one more membrane is there which separates that that is the basilar membrane basilar membrane got it that the location of resinous membrane is present between the scala vestibule and scala media and basilar membrane is present between the scala media and scala tympani right anyhow these three tubes scala vestibule scala media and scala tympani these has to be divided with the two membranes we know as known as a resinous membrane and basilar membrane that the cochlea these vestibule and tympani scala vestibule and scala tympani which are filled with the fluid known as a perilymph these two are filled with perilymph perilymph got it and whereas the scala media is filled with the endolymph perilymph outer these two are periphery tubes and this is a inside is there that's called as a ductal fluid is called as endolymph 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 got it now see here the cochlear membrane which have a some epithelial cells are there small cells are present on over the that cochlear membrane this makes the one organ known as the organ of cauti organ of of cauti which is present on over the basilar membrane on the basilar membrane we can find the small cells are the epithelial cells which possess the small hair cells we call as the these cells hair cells hair cells what it these hair cells and it is covered by the very fine membrane we call it as the tectorial membrane what is the membrane the membrane name is tectorial tectorial membrane 
right tectorial membrane these all together possess the small cilia the complete cells which have a the which process the small cilia is called as a stereocilia stereocilia right these cells are the head cells and they have process the small cilia is called as a stereocilia which are covered by the small membrane we known as the tectorial membrane we known as the tectorial membrane during the mechanism of hearing means what when the sound frequency it will be passes into the internal ear at that time the cilia will be ripple cilia will be ripple and they can generate the accent potential here is there you know from these cochlear only one branch of cochlear branch will be innervated to this only that is known as the that is known as the branch of eighth cranial nerve that's known as a cochlear nerve in the beginning i told you know vestibulo cochlear why they given as a cochlear means it is innervated from the cochlear cochlear part that's the reason that's known as a cochlear cochlear branch which is the eighth one now here see this uh, organ of cochlea which is in the cochlea right then this cochlea means for you know the complete structure which are having the three tubes 1 2 3 that's the complete structure is the cochlea is a vas shaped spring is innervated with the one nerve is known as the branch of eighth cranial nerve next we'll go for the vestibular apparatus vestibular apparatus right vestibular apparatus consists of the otolith organ vestibular apparatus consists of otolith organ here is the otolith organ vestibular apparatus right this vestibular apparatus consists of otolith organ it means that organ consists of the two parts which are known as the saccula plus utricle these are the two small parts present in the otolith organ saccule saccule and utricle otolith organ consists of the the calcium carbonate structure that's why called as a otolith the saccule and utricle these two together called as a otolith organ which is present in the together called as a vestibular along with the cochlea we call as vestibular apparatus this saccula and utricle they have a projecting ridges they have a projecting ridges called as macula projecting ridges of saccula and utricle called as a macula macula this have a sensor of gravity it can sense the gravity right anyhow saccula and utricle are essential for the linear acceleration they have as they can process the perception of sense the sense is the linear acceleration linear acceleration which is provided by the saccula and utricle of organ of cord sorry otolith organ see linear acceleration it means means saccula and utricle they possess the sense of linear acceleration for this saccula this saccula it responsible for the responsible for the vertical movement vertical movement when we are moving and lift up upside and down upward and downward This is the vertical movement which is perceived by the saccule that lift upward 
direction and downward direction when you move in the lift upward and downward the vertical movement which is perceived by the circular whereas the utricle utricle it's useful for the that has a perception of horizontal movement horizontal movement when we are traveling in car forward and backward here downward and upward but here forward and backward direction which of the following part will be passive the sense of upward forward and backward movement means should of the utricle and upward and downward acceleration this is the circle but anyhow these utricle and what we call circle both should be used for the that movement is the that linear acceleration linear acceleration so that's about the vestibular apparatus and here is a thing uh, cochlea and vestibular next one is a semicircular canals okay which are the three in number we call as a semicircular canals these semicircular canals also very very useful for the uh, what you call that how this uh, linear acceleration they also have a that uh, rotation angular acceleration we call as a angular acceleration which are provided by the semi circular canals circular canals semi circular canals here three in number which are the semi circular here the bones how they are you know this is a one semi circular canal the swollen part of the this part known as the ampulla it has a some ridges are there sensory ridges are there we known as the crystae are crystal their sacral and utricle they have a sensory ridges known as the macula but here crystae the swollen part known as the ampulla like these these are the three are there right these three are there these semi circular canals which responsible for the the perception of sense we known as the angular acceleration angular acceleration right it means nothing but rotation while you are rotating our head while you are rotating head like this that angular acceleration which is possible by the that semi circular canals here you know that i told you know cochlea in the vestibule vestibular apparatus one now will be exit or the innervate from the vestibular apparatus that is now vestibular now the branch of cochlea and vestibule these two as a eighth cranial now eighth cranial now now these two together dynamic acceleration dynamic acceleration which is provided by the whereas the these semi circular canals and organ of cochlea both organ of cochlea and the cochlea and semi circular canals these two together they meant in the dynamic movement means when you are resting place our body is the static right but our hand our hands are moving these are the not static stationary okay dynamic movement will be maintained by the that uh, semi circular canals and organ of cochlea of cochlea these two are maintained right so here mechanism of hearing mechanism of hearing when sound waves fall on the ear they should be travel this is the funnel actually no it can receive the sound waves then it 
fall on that vibration that sound vibrations will be fall on the particular eardrum then here are a chain of ear bones are there they can conduct the same sound to the these vowel window and here cochlea then vestibular apparatus here itself only vestibular cochlear nerve is there you know that will be because of these uh, endolymph and ferrolymph uh, endolymph and perilymph and they have a stereo cilia in the cochlea they can repel then automatically the same force sound wave travel through the auditory nerve which is known as the acranial nerve to the auditory area of our brain then they will be execute with sound you are hearing here more than 180 decibel of sound if you are continuously hearing then it may cause the deafness actually 30 40 in our streets is a tolerable if 90 above it may cause the partial deafness right based on the sound frequency only our tympanum will be receives and send the same sound waves to the this our internal ear structures right mechanism of hearing in mechanism of hearing here when sound vibrations are fall on here to this when they travel from external environment to internal ear to the that sound vibrations are the waves which are received from the auditory from auditory to external auditory meters and external auditory meters to next part is the tympanum or the tympanic membrane when sound waves fall on here then through this here vowel window is there you know vowel window vowel window to it will be transfer to the cochlea transfer to the cochlea you know here cochlea consists of the endolymph and ferrolymph and more over that has a organ of cochlea so here in this it has a three tubes which we call as scala vestibule and scala media and scala tympani here is on the basilar membrane here resonance membrane is there this is the basilar membrane that cochlear epithelium consists of the what we said before this these cells are there you know that high cells when sound vibrations vibrate here these high cells they will be repel how the tides are move into the sea how tide movement like that these will repel and they can touch the pectoral membrane from the pectoral membrane when it stimulates here as a auditory nerve is there from this sound vibration it travel when the pectoral membrane will be stimulates by these high cells you know that stereo cilia the cilia is known as the stereo cilia then this nerve which is the auditory nerve which can convey the information which is the auditory information to the cortex cerebral cortex auditory cortex of the brain and this one there you know here cochlea have three tubes this is the scala vestibule and this is the scala media and scala tympani here is a membrane is called as a resonance membrane and this membrane is called as a basilar membrane 
which are filled by the perilymph and endolymph perilymph and endolymph these sound vibrations when travel from the vowel window to the cochlea of these fluids they can these series will be ripple and then automatically it will be depolarized and send the information to the cortex of the auditory cortex of the brain so here why it is actually see here the functions we told you know this in the cochlea cochlea have a this way for the equilibrium and these are the semi circular canals for the angular acceleration and linear acceleration along with these semi circular canals and otorit organ which are the ventricular and circular along with that they can brings the dynamic equilibrium dynamic equilibrium so here in such way that this vestibular cochlear nerve convey the information to the auditory and auditory area of the brain through the afferent neurons then it will be analyze which sound we are hearing due to that we can respond in such way right this is a complete uh, structure of ear and mechanism of ear and what are the parts in the external and internal ear and here middle ear these are the things thank you here is one more objective is the border between the middle ear and inner ear is formed by here the question itself is the border between the middle ear and inner ear is formed by option 1 incus and vowel window and pinna and tympanic membrane see here you can easily eliminate this is the external ear this is the middle ear this is the internal ear so here question itself for that the border between the middle ear and the inner ear this is the middle ear you know this is the internal ear then which is the border you know that incus incus is the that bone which is the small bone present in the middle ear which is the m i s smallest bone incus the smallest s stapes is there and incus also there that's why this should not be the answer because it is completely in the middle ear only and next one vowel window here vowel window is there and round window is there which is the fenestra rotundus and fenestra vowalis in this have a chance because of it is a border and pinna is there is no chance of this pinna and incus tympanic membrane is the Ear drum. This is also actually border between the middle and external ear. There is no chance. Then answer is the vowel window is the answer because of it is vowel window only border between the middle ear and internal ear. That is the answer is the vowel window. Here is the objective. Scala vestibule is connected with. Here scala vestibule also called as the vestibular duct. which is present in the cochlea in the cochlea it should have a 
Atom they given as a Fenistra rotundus, Fenistra ovalis, and third one is Fenistra dimpani, and fourth one is the Fenistra scala media. So here which is the appropriate answer. For that, here it is a scala vestibule and scala media and scala tympani. So here Fenistra rotundus is a not an answer because it is round window and Fenistra vowels with the vowel window which are related to the that just composition of the middle ear but it is related to the internal ear purely that's why the answer is the scala tympani or the scala media scala tympani or the scala media so scala media is uh, separated from the the vestibular duct is separate from the resinous membrane that's the reason scala tympani is the answer right this is the answer for this here argon of 40 present in here the objective is argon of 40 present in here argon of 40 which is present in the first term to confirm which is in the middle ear it is present in the sorry in the internal ear which is present in the internal ear so here what the actions they have given have to go for the scala vestibule is the first one option second one is scala tympani and third one is the scala media last one is the scala tympani membrane here what are the parts present in the internal ear have to go for that for example scala vestibule that is internal ear part scala tympani also internal ear part scala media also internal ear part but it is the not an answer tympani membrane is a not an answer because of this is the eardrum, nothing but eardrum. Now, one of the among three, which is the correct one. You know that this is the scala vestibule and scala media and scala tympani. Now it is that organ of corti should be present on the basilar membrane of scala media. Scala media. So this is the answer. Scala media should be answered. Here only it has a stereocilius are there. This complete structure is called the organ of corti, which is on the basilar membrane. So, scala vestibule, scala tympani, and scala media. That's the reason here answer is the scala media. Remaining are not answers. What is the answer here? Scala media is the answer. Right.